Hey friends, welcome back to Chronically Overdressed. So it is really hot today. It's going to be, I think, up to 92. So I am staying indoors in the air conditioning. I have my iced tea right here, um, which is really good. And I thought that today we would go through a different catalog. I'm still working on the Spiegel catalog. I'm still going to do um, a couple more videos showing the Spiegel catalog. And then I have a Sears catalog and I think I have another um, Montgomery Ward catalog. But this one is really special, at least to me. So um, I collect Lane Bryant, vintage Lane Bryant catalogs. And this one I got a couple of months ago and I'm so happy with it because it is from 1932. So it's actually the oldest catalog that I have. And I did a little TikTok and um, Instagram reel showing some of the, you know, some of my favorite outfits from the catalog. Uh, but I really wanted to show it a little bit more in depth with you guys because um, and I want to give a little bit of history about the company. Um, I mean, aside from the fashions of its catalog being absolutely stunningly gorgeous, um, the history of the company itself and the woman behind Lane Bryant is really fascinating to me. There's so many times when I talk about the vintage catalogs I have, people don't realize how far back Lane Bryant actually goes. Um, so I want to give you a little bit of history about that and then we will go through the catalog together and ogle at the gorgeous outfits that are in there. Behind Lane Bryant, uh, her name was Lena Himmelstein, and she immigrated to the U.S. Um, by herself from Lithuania in 1895 at the age of 16. And she didn't have any family in New York, um, but she supported herself by working as a seamstress, and she became really skilled at that craft. She married pretty young, before she was 20. Um, and she married a Jewish immigrant jeweler from Russia named David Bryant. And um, soon after their son was born, unfortunately, David died. By 1904, her seamstress business was so successful that she decided to open up a shop, um, the kind that had the shop in the front and the living quarters in the back for her and her son. But when a bank officer misspelled her name on the business application, um, he transposed the name. So Lena's name became Lane and Lane Bryant was born. Lane Bryant Designs actually began with maternity wear. She created an innovative elasticized waistband and accordion pleating skirt that really helped to liberate middle class pregnant women that really wanted to break away from that Victorian tradition. Lena remarried in 1909 to Albert Malzen, who became her business partner. By 1911, Lane Bryant's shop was grossing $50,000 per year. After World War I, Lane Bryant Incorporated introduced clothing for the stout figure. So by 1923, the large size business had surpassed the maternity wear accounting for more than half of the annual $5 million in sales. At the time of her death in 1951, Lane Bryant was the sixth largest mail order catalog in the United States. I know for me, it's kind of hard to rectify the idea of what the current Lane Bryant is to, you know, this story of this just go-getter woman who immigrated here at a very young age, had tragedy with her husband dying and having a young son and, and just, you know, that innovative ideas of creating maternity wear where that really wasn't a, a thing. And then turning that into um, the stout figure <laughs> wear for plus size women um, and just capitalizing on that. And, and also just seeing the fashions, the styles that they came up with. Um, I have a hard time rectifying that with the current Lane Bryant and the styles that they come out with because the styles that are in these catalogs are 
very on par with just what the fashion was of the day. It didn't matter that you were plus size or stout or tall or anything like that. They were still providing really fashionable clothing. And I mean, if you've shopped at Lane Bryant lately, it's not the case really. Um, so I, I don't know, you know, I'm, I'm really not sure kind of the, the in-between sections of, of like maybe the 60s and 70s and getting into the 80s when that whole process stopped of, you know, just offering what's fashionable, what's in style um, for straight size people should also be in style for plus size people. Um, but we're not going to get into the, uh, the logistics of all of that. We are just going to appreciate the beautiful styles that, um, that this 1932 catalog has um, and, um, you know, get some inspiration for some of these styles. Okay. So unfortunately my, the cover and like the, the back cover and the front have, um, have torn apart, but the rest of the catalog is fine. So I'm just going to remove these so I don't mess with them. Um, I don't want to <laughs> mess them up any more than they already are. So, um, the, the thing that I find interesting is, you know, the, even even in 1932, they're still talking about, um, you know, slenderizing styles and all of that stuff. So even though this is for plus size women, it's still kind of geared towards looking slimmer, which um, I think in some of these, or at least in, in the... Um, like the 19, I think I have the 1956 catalog that I have. Almost every single page is like how to look slimmer. This is a flattering style and that kind of stuff. It's still, um, it's still pretty jarring to see that kind of language um, even back then. So, um, you know, it's it's interesting. Lane Bryant herself, uh, Lena, was was a stout woman, um, and you know so. I don't know. It, it didn't. It doesn't seem like there was just a ton of being comfortable in yourself, um, but at least they were offering beautiful clothing, no matter what your size was. So the catalog starts off with a letter from Lane Bryant, and there is some stuff in here that just kind of makes me cringe, to be honest. Um, but so it says, dear friends, if I seem even more enthused than usual about the clothes in this, our newest style book, don't be surprised. For never since I cut the first Lane Bryant dress with my own hands over 30 years ago, have I had the privilege to offer such a, a splendid selection of slenderizing fashions, nor at prices so low. Never have my dreams and hopes been so richly fulfilled, and those dreams, you know, were to enable every stout woman to be her slimmer self by providing her correct fit and be, be her smarter self by giving her the current fashions of the day. So <laughs> it's, it's super cringy to me to be like, you know, I want to enable every every stout woman to actually look different, to look slimmer. Um, I understand the idea of the correct fit um, because, and this goes for everybody, whether it's their straight size or plus size. If something fits you correctly, if it's if it's you know tailored to your body, if it's the right size, it just looks more polished. Um, but you know, using the slimmer self here is just kind of. Ugh gross. Um, but I do believe in the correct fit and, you know, of course, you know, get her smarter self giving the current fashions of the day. I like that that was on offer, um, that they didn't specifically, you know, make outfits that are very different from what the style was in the day just for fat people. So, um, yeah, I'm not going to completely let her off the hook for, for that one. Um, and then just, you know, throughout the whole thing, there's just so much about, um, you know, the word flattering and slenderizing and all that stuff. And it's just, yeah, after a while it gets kind of, it gets kind of icky. Um, 
But on to the fashions. Um, okay, so we have a two-piece suit here for $10.95, all silk, flat crepe. Um, so it looks like, is it just the skirt and the jacket? Both the dress and jacket are fashioned of very good quality. So, okay, I'm confused. Okay, so it is a dress. It just looks like a, a blouse and a skirt, but it's actually a dress. Oh, I like that. It's two separate, um, looks like two separate pieces, but uh, with a belt um, and two different, like they're two tones. So it's navy blue or black, each with an eggshell blouse section. So, and then chocolate brown, ooh, with a shell pink blouse section. Oh, that would be really neat. Um, and then the sizes go from a 38 to a 58 bust. Um, I don't know if they do, I'll get to the sizing section here to see like what the full, you know, bust waist and um, hip measurements are, but. Okay, so this one here is featured in the foremost fashion magazines, which is nice. Again, it's showing that, you know, these styles are just what's on offer right now for pretty much everybody and they're just making them in um, larger sizes so those are absolutely gorgeous and then over here on this page this is really interesting so it has two-way sleeves it says you may wear them long or short um, so they have these little like slip on sleevelets that you can add to um, to the dress. So, well, they say short sleeve, but it's really three quarter sleeve. And then they have the little slip on sleevelet that goes down to like bracelet length. Um, but they're thinner. So they, you know, they really kind of um, show off your, your forearms and looks like a couple of them have beautiful buttons on them that, um, that go, go with the, the outfit. That's really adorable. I like that idea. And it looks like they might be, yeah, they're like elasticized. So you just kind of slip them on. And if you get a little hot and you want to show off your forearms, you just take them off. So this catalog actually has a lot of color illustrations in it, which I love because, you know, it just, it kind of, it, it just helps to bring together the, what it actually looked like. Um, you know, when we look at the sepia one, the sepia color ones or the black and white ones, we can only imagine, even if we read what color it was, um, it's just so nice to actually see them in color. And like this dress here has just these gorgeous, almost fireworks. Um, it looks like a bunch of fireworks and it's just so vibrant and so colorful and then this dress in particular i am obsessed with um this kind of tan color and then it has the um looks like little flowers like orange and green with a green bow i mean that is just gorgeous and then it also brings you can see um along the collar and on the pockets you can see it brings that applique, that kind of um, the little flower applique up on the collar and the um, and the pockets. Oh, and also on the cuffs. Oh my gosh, so gorgeous. Love that. And here are some more, um, what are these, silk crepe? Yeah, silk flat crepe. And um, oh, this wool flannel sports jacket. That's really cute. Um, so yeah, so this is 1932. So the um, the waist is starting to get more into that natural waist area. Um, there's not a lot of drop waist, although you will see some of the um, like the gatherings are a little bit lower in the front. Um, but you know, most of the belting and the waist is sitting at a pretty natural waist. Um, they're not quite high-waisted yet, um, but it's definitely getting away from like that, you know, the 1920s drop waist and kind of, you know, stick straight. Um, these are starting to get a little bit more form and, you know, curves for the body. 
So washable silk frocks, easy to wash, easy to iron. This one, these um, with the little tie in front, that's very cute. And the pleating, just so much attention to detail on this. It's They're just absolutely stunning. Okay, what do we have here? Lane Bryant presents an exclusive new fashion, the three-way dress with two sets of sleeves and two brassieres free with each dress. What? Oh my gosh. Okay. So long sleeves attached to the brassiere. That's interesting. Short sleeved um, on another brassiere. So it's more like a camisole. That's what it looks like. Um, or the dress may be worn without sleeves. Oh, wow. So the sleeves on this one, on the second one, are kind of an ombre color almost. Um, they, you know, they start off with a darker color. It looks like they have some sort of applique. And then I don't know if that's considered a, a bishop sleeve um, where it kind of puffs out at the forearm. Um, and then the short sleeve one has this beautiful little bow at the top. Um, and then you can also wear it sleeveless. This, I love this idea. They need to bring this back. Being able to change out the sleeves the way <laughs> for different, um, for different weather. And I mean, it really does change the whole look of the dress. I love this idea. Why don't they do this anymore? And on this side, they are, you know, talking about how jackets can make two costumes out of one. Um, so just basically wearing a jacket over your dress gives you just a completely different look. So, um, you know, you can wear, uh, wear the whole dress without the jacket or put the jacket on and it just looks completely different. Oh, goodness. Okay, so I ha actually have the original order forms um, in here. I will... I will have to make a copy of that and I will put this up on my blog so you guys can see the order form and how to, um, they have this whole like how to take your measurements um, and, you know, give all actual measurements, do not make any allowances and send no postage, we deliver for free. So this one was is based out of New York. I think a lot of the some of the other ones that I had were um, in St. Louis or Chicago. Anyway, there was different distributors um, for Lane Bryant um, across, it was mostly on the East Coast, I think. So, okay, so these flattering Mrs. Styles in your style, in your size. Um, so I'm assuming these are geared more towards the younger woman, although, I think anybody could really wear those. This is plus sizes from 16 plus to 30 plus. 36 to 50 bust. Wow. I love that size, size range. That's amazing. Okay, so these are the carefree summer frocks. Um, now these I would wear every single day. And we even have some slenderizing pajamas. Stout women everywhere exclaim with delight that they discover how very well they look in one-piece pajamas like these. Oh my gosh, we look good in something? The fabric is fast color linen. I never heard of that. Printed in a smart pattern while the solid color trimming is of cotton broadcloth to match the print. Slenderizing surplus waste comes in um, print in brown, green, or king blue, each with natural, town, natural tan ground. Sizes from 36 to 58 bust. For $1.98, what a deal. And then it looks like we have some house coats and um, aprons. These are very cute. Okay, so we have some shoes now with stout arch support. <laughs> There's this whole section over here about the starch 
uh, sorry, stout arch support. Um, so the shoes support the arch and preserve the nat natural line of feet. Um, again, it's this like attention to detail. And it's, it's the thing is like larger women aren't the only ones that have bad feet. <laughs> so, but we did benefit from, from this kind of thing, you know, that, that people believed or, you know, we do tend to have a lot more, um, foot problems just because we are carrying around a bit more weight, but, um, it's not exclusive to us. I know plenty of plus size women that don't have back problems or, you know, foot problems or anything like that. And I know plenty of straight size people that do. Um, but it's really interesting to see that that was another part of, you know, what they were working on is comfortable wear for a larger woman. So I'm seeing a lot of the kind of open Oxford type of shoes. Um, the spectator shoes look like they're um, very popular. We have some hosiery. These are beautiful. Fully fashioned stockings. We have a mesh hose, looks like, um, like a fishnet. And these look like they have some sort of texture to them. And then we have surgical elastic stockings. So basically compression stockings, which is kind of cool. Here's a few brassieres and camisoles. And then here's some lounging or sleeping pajamas. Um, two pieces, the top and the, and the pants. And gosh, I wish that these were available still. Um, there's some nightgowns in here. But yeah, these, these two piece lounging or sleeping pajamas are just gorgeous. Um, I really need to get my butt in gear and start sewing so I can just make my own because these are just amazing. More like camisoles and little bralettes and pantaloons. Oh, and then an elastic webbing sanitary belt. That's interesting. And then of course you have another mail order section that's pretty much the same as this one here. Is this one also from New York? Yeah, same one. Okay. And then the last page, we have a few more um, color illustrations here. And again, gorgeous. The sleeves on this green one are so beautiful. Um, just slightly see through and then some spring coats although those look pretty warm to me but yeah absolutely gorgeous I'm loving the um, the colors on these illustrations it just it helps so much to understand what um, you know what colors were actually worn at that time and um, yeah, it gives you just a more rounded idea. So anyway, that is my 1932 Lane Bryant catalog. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. And um, if I get any more in, I, I have a, I think I have a 1956, which I've, I've done both of them on my, um, my blog. So you can go onto my blog and check those out. Um, but I'm still on the hunt for any older, I'd like to get a few more 1930s or um, early 1940s catalogs. So um, if I get those in, I will definitely share them with you as well. But thanks for sitting here with me to go through my catalog and I hope you are enjoying your summer and I will see you again soon. Bye.